Hello and welcome to this new quick day episode. My name is Philippe Ozil. I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. And today I'm going to be talking about dynamic interactions and how you can use them to communicate across Lightning Web Components. There are three ways to communicate across components on the page. First, you can use custom events. This lets you communicate from a child to a parent. You can also use Lightning Messaging Service. With Lightning Messaging Service, you can communicate across sibling components as well, that is, components that do not share a direct common ancestor. Lightning Messaging Service also allows you to communicate across different technology stacks. So you can communicate across Lightning Web Components or and Visual Force Components. And finally, the third and last option is dynamic interactions. With dynamic interactions, you can communicate with sibling components, and you also have the ability to configure declaratively the handling of the event. And this is what we're going to look at. We're going to start with a demo first. So we are here in my org, and I have a lining app page that I have set up with two custom components. On the left, we have a record selector component, and on the right, we have a record form component. Now, the record selector will allow me to pick an object and a specific record from this object. So for example, I can pick this one. And if I click view record, this will fire a dynamic interaction from the record selector object to the record form object. We'll carry over the object API name and the record ID so that the form located in the record form component can render the component. What is pretty awesome with this is that it works with multiple object types. So for example, here, if I change my object type to opportunity, I can pick an opportunity and I can visualize it and the form will adapt to show the right fields. This is using the standard lightning record form component. So let's jump into the code to see how this works. We're in the project that holds our custom components and here you can see they're under lightning web components and we have the record form and the record selector component. Now we're gonna study three things. First, we're going to look at how we can declare a dynamic interaction event. Then we're going to look at how we can fire it. And finally, how we can handle it. So the declaration of the dynamic interaction event is done in the metadata descriptor of the component that holds the event. And if you, if you open it, you'll notice that there's a new tag under the configuration of the component that is an event tag. The event tag defines a dynamic interaction event. An important property of this tag is the name of the, of the event, record selected in our case. And then we see, if we scroll down, there's a schema uh, child tag under the event. And this schema tag holds a JSON object that describes the event properties. In our case, we have two properties, a record ID property and a object API name property. And both are typed as strings. Now, remember these names, the name of the event and the name of the properties, these will be used in the JavaScript when we fire the event. Let's take a look at this. In our demo, whenever we click on view record, we fire a, an event that is caught by the handle record selected method. With this, we get the value from the two dropdowns when we have selected the object API name and the record ID. And then we use this bit of code, which is the standard way to fire a custom event. Now, what's different from the regular custom events is that we're actually referring here to a dynamic interaction event. We're using the name of our dynamic interaction as we have defined in the metadata descriptor, and we're also using the two properties that we have defined in our metadata descriptor. This is how we fire the dynamic interaction event. Next and last step, handling the event, is done in the org. So I'm gonna go back to our demo org, and we're gonna see how this works. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to edit this page so that we can see it in the Lightning App Builder. This is where the configuration takes place. I'm going to select the record selector component. And notice that when, whenever we select a component which defines some dynamic interaction events, we have an interaction tab here. I'm going to select it. And here we can see our, our event listed under there. Uh, of course, we could have more than one event and we can have more than one interaction. In our case, we already have an interaction that is defined. I'm going to delete it so that we recreate it for the sake of the, of the demo. So the first thing to do is to click on Add Interaction for our event. This will automatically select the source of our event, that is our component here. It selects also the event uh, here, 
And at this point, we can look at the schema of our event. So this is the information that we have entered in the component descriptor. We can see the two properties that the event hold. And then we need next to select a type of interaction. At the moment, out of Spring 22, there's only one type of interaction that is possible, that is update properties of the target component. There might be others coming up in the future. And the final thing we need to do here is to select the target component that will receive the dynamic interaction. So in our case, we want to fire an event that is being caught by the record form component. So I select the record form component. When I select the record form component, this will display the properties of the record form component. These are the properties that are exposed by, to the Lightning App Builder by the record form component. Of course, I could enter static values here by hard coding values, but what's really neat with dynamic interactions is that I have access to this dynamic field value here. So if I go with curly bracket exclamation mark event, I have access to the properties of my dynamic interaction event. So I'm gonna add those two here to get access to my properties from my dynamic interaction event. And that's it. The object API name has been assigned the value of the object API name event property and the same thing goes with the record. Now I can save my page. I can go back to the lining up page and check what it still works. And there we go. We have successfully configured a dynamic interaction going from one record to another. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video if you've enjoyed it. And also you can subscribe to our channel to get notified about new content. Have a great day.